Hi everybody, it's Chris Carr, welcome. And today I have an incredible guest. Dr. Kelly Turner is here and we're gonna talk about her new book, Radical Remission. Welcome, Kelly. Thanks, Chris. I'm really excited to be here talking to you. I'm so glad you could make the time because I've been wanting to speak to you for so long now. And you know, what you're writing about and what you've studied and what you teach and what you help people with is very close to me as a cancer thriver and to many of the people who follow me. But also what I find so interesting and, and so important about your work is all of this stuff um, is perfect for people who want to stay well. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for putting it out there. And you're before welcome. you before we dive in, I want to just let people know a little bit about um, who you are. I'm going to read your bio real quick. Okay. So you, gorgeous woman, Dr. Kelly Turner, PhD. That's a lot of schooling, my friend. I know. It was a lot of school. <laughs> a lot of good school. She's a researcher, a lecturer, and a counselor in the field of integrative oncology, whose specialized research focus is in radical remission of cancer. Dr. Turner holds a BA from Harvard University, a really schlocky school, I might add. Yeah, terrible. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Yeah, okay. And a PhD from the University of California, Berkeley, and she lives in New York City. Um, all right, Mama, let's start with the easiest and obvious question, but I know that your answer is going to be pretty deep and profound. What is radical remission? Radical remission, um, formerly known as spontaneous remission. I'm leading the charge to change the name, and we can talk about why. But radical remission is when someone survives cancer against all odds. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at statistically unlikely cancer remissions. Mm -hmm. So if a doctor thinks that you only have a certain number of months to live and you greatly exceed that, I want to study you. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at people who are really beating the odds. For me, that's three different categories. The first is people who heal from cancer without any Western medicine. The second is people who try Western medicine to its fullest, but then their doctors tell them there's nothing more we can do for you. Then they have to use other methods and they turn it around. So I also study that group of people. And last but not least, I have recently begun studying people who combine Western and alternative approaches at the same time to overcome something really serious like pancreatic cancer mm -hmm. or stage four lung cancer. So really anyone who's beating extreme odds when it comes to cancer, I like to talk to them and investigate them and ask them every question under the sun. So when you, how many people have you studied so far? Well, I've analyzed over a thousand cases Wow! and I've done over 200 direct in-depth interviews. But what's interesting is that for every case that's published and by published, I mean in medical journals, it's estimated that there are a hundred more that go unpublished. So there are so many cases out there that I haven't even touched or talked to. Um, and that's, that's just means that we have so much more to learn. What's your takeaway from all of this? What is the thing that inspires you most when you study these people? <sighs> wow. Healing is possible at any time. I think that's, that's what I've taken away is that Anything is possible, including healing at, at the last moment. You know, mm. it doesn't happen all the time, unfortunately, but just knowing that someone could be, you know, given up on by their doctors and thinking that this is it and they can turn it around gives me a lot of hope and belief that anything's possible. That's beautiful. You know, I have a lot of things that come to mind talking to you. Yeah. And I think that because a lot of uh, folks out there who follow me know that I never did any traditional Western treatments because there weren't any, not because I was, you know, setting out to be a brave pioneer. I would have done anything possible when I was newly diagnosed. Um, and, you know, I live with cancer and I've been living a healthy life with cancer for 11 years now. But sometimes folks think, well, she didn't do any treatment. I'm not going to do any treatment. And what I have come to um, suggest the most is to find the best doctor for your disease and really do your best to create an integrative plan because from my perspective, sometimes people need both. Can you talk a, a little bit about that from your perspective and your research? Yeah, and I'm so glad you brought this up because it's something I mentioned like on page two of my book, which is to say... I am not against Western medicine. I am not against chemo or surgery or radiation. Um, I am into healing cancer. And mm. there was this group of people that were healing cancer against incredible odds, 
and no one was studying them. Literally no one was studying them. And I, that part to me as a researcher was irresponsible. So I study them, but it doesn't mean I'm against Western medicine. And, you know, exactly. I think you, you, you have it perfectly, which is every situation is different. If there's anything I've learned from my research, it's that everyone has a different change that their body is asking them to make. You know, some of the healers that I met said, you know, that their patient X needed to change their diet and their patient Y needed to change their marriage. Wow. So there are different things yeah. that you might need to change for your health. And um, for some people, chemo will make a lot of sense. And for other cancers, you know, chemo has been shown to not be effective very much at all. And so it depends on you, your cancer, where you're at and, and your choices and your, your individual situation. So let's move over to some of uh, these steps that you've identified and you basically pull them together by saying, all right, these are the nine principles that all of the folks that I have studied really have practiced or um, maybe they haven't practiced all of them, but these are the, the important things that continually come up in these patients who are successful. Um, I, you know, I love talking about nutrition. It's my favorite thing to discuss. So can we start there? Yes. We can definitely start there. And I, I definitely like to say that these aren't nine steps because um, I'm not a doctor. I'm not an MD. I'm a PhD researcher. These are the nine most common things Great. that these people did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good so point. Good that's point. all we can say. You don't say. have to do them all, but these are the most common things. Yeah. You don't have to do any of them if yeah. you don't want to. But if you want to know what radical remission survivors do, these are the nine most common things that they do. And you're such a great radical remission survivor because you I know you do many of these nine things. Um, the first one, of course, is radically changing your diet. And for the people that I study, what that meant was, first of all, greatly increasing their fruits and vegetables. And I, I don't mean just a little bit. I mean like a lot. So um, for the people I study, that means that half of their plate at every meal is fruits and, fruits and or vegetables. So for breakfast, they're not having eggs and toast and bacon and, you know, maybe like a couple grapes, they're having a green juice and they're having, you know, leftover vegetables from the night before with the whole grain and right. some fresh fruit and stuff. Um, but really half of their plate, um, at least half is fruits and vegetables. So I know you're a big fan of that. And I'm a huge fan of that. That's the crazy, sexy diet. That's crazy, sexy kitchen. That's everything that I took as a patient when I started to open my eyes and really study um, what creates inflammation and disease in the body. And I thought, okay, this is the first step. You know, what I put in my body is almost, it is my medicine. So um, I became a, a big advocate for plant passionate living. And I think it was the first question that I asked you when we were going back and forth over email and I hadn't had a chance to really look, dive into your book yet. And I was just like, all right, what kind of diet do you, you know, yeah. talk about in this book? And you said that and I was like, oh, okay. I love her. Okay. <laughs> I would have loved you personally anyway, but like, I love you even more now. <laughs> yes. Well, it's not me. It's the, it's the survivors like you. Again, I am just the messenger of your wonderful healings. And you guys are the best teachers to all of us of how you could turn around something so scary and so serious and, and make it something manageable. And certainly, you know, it just makes sense. If there's yeah. something wrong with your body, you should watch what you put into your body, right? Absolutely. <laughs> it just I, makes sense. Absolutely. So besides eating a lot of um, vegetables and, and some fruits, what else are you finding nutrition-wise? Nutrition-wise, they also took out four things, meat, wheat, sweets, and dairy. Um, most of them took those out completely until their cancer was gone. Um, some people just reduce them dramatically. Mm -hmm. Some people, now that their cancer is gone, dabble in those things occasionally. Other people still don't eat them at all. So again, it's all based on your personal body and your personal preference. But again, from a research standpoint, meat, wheat, or gluten, sweets, and dairy, um, they can increase inflammation in mm -hmm. the tissue in the tissues of your body and inflammation is being linked more and more towards uh, cancer in, in terms that it it makes your body hospitable to cancer growth right so does it cause it we don't know yet but we know that once cancer cells are there it's giving them fertile ground now and i know so people are going to say things like okay Sugar. Tell me the definition or the difference between um, fruit sugar and my favorite really sweet dessert. 
Yeah. Well, again, I'm not an MD nor am I a nutritionist, but I can tell you what I've learned from the people I study. Great. And what they say is that um, once cancer's in the body, it metabolizes sugar at a rate of up to 50 times of a normal cell. And that is just fact. You can, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's, someone won a no Nobel Prize for that. Um, cancer cells breathe anaerobically, which is why they use so much sugar, but that's getting way too technical. The point is, um, the people that I study reduce their refined sugar. Now, they also eat lots of fruits and vegetables. So they are getting sugar because our bodies actually need glucose to live. Mm -hmm. um, even when we're healthy and we have no cancer in our body, although we all have cancer in our body every day, different topic, we all need glucose to breathe and live and metabolize. So yes, you need some form of sugar, but the people that I study get it from fruits and vegetables. They don't get it from refined sugar, cakes, sweets, corn syrup, right? that sort of thing. That's awesome. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing your, your findings on nutrition. Let's move over to another topic. And you have nine um, points here, but I'm going to only pick three. And I want to talk a little bit about herbs and supplements because I know that that confuses, confuses patients and people who aren't patients so much. So what do you got about that? Oh, I wish I had the one herb. I wish I could tell you they were all taking this. Yeah. Um, and then poof, their cancer went away. Um, of course, we would all love to hear that, right? Yeah. But instead, what I heard was that everybody is different. And mm. so everyone's going to need different supplements. So if, you, if your body has a lot of yeast and fungus in it, you're going to need to take antifungals. If somebody else's body has a lot of low-level bacterial infections, you're going to need to take antibacterials. And if somebody else is just really depleted in terms of minerals or vitamins, they're going to need to take um, supplements that help replenish and boost up. So it really varied depending on individual need, but there were three main categories that I can talk about because I think that awesome. they're important categories that mm -hmm. probably apply to everyone. Great. The first category are herbs and supplements that help you digest your food. Mm. So you want to, all these wonderful green juices that you're making, you want your body to absorb it. Right. And so things like probiotics, prebiotics, and enzymes mm -hmm. um, will help you get the most out of those fruits and vegetables. The second category were herbs and supplements that help detoxify the body. So we have a lot of toxins in our world. We have chemicals, we have superbugs, viruses, and right. bacteria. Um, we have, you know, yeast and fungus. And so things that we need to clear out of the body, there are certain supplements that can help do that. And again, what you personally need to clear out is going to vary. Mm -hmm. um, some people might have a lot of heavy metals. Other people might have asbestos. Other people might have bacteria. Right. Um, and the third category, which is really important and ongoing for all the people I study, are herbs and supplements that help boost your immune system. Mm. And that's really, the immune system is another takeaway that I took from my research, which is our immune system knows very well how to deal with cancer. It, right. it has all the tools it needs to go to a cancer cell and say, oh, there's a bad copy, I'm just going to pop it. But you need your immune system to be strong and you need it to be active mm. because can, cancer can hide chemically. It can put up a chemical mask. So herbs and supplements that really boost your immune system and give it the tools that it needs to do its job fully, um, those are supplements that the people I study continue to take years after their remission. So tell me an example of one of those types of supplements. Um, mushrooms. Yeah. Uh, mushrooms are great immune boosters and cancer fighters. Aloe vera is another, uh, there's different ways to take aloe vera, but aloe vera supplements. Um, things like vitamin C, great Im immune booster. Um, gosh, the list goes on and yeah. on. Uh, well, that's a great start. And, and so for people who want to know what would be good for them, I always suggest finding either an integrative oncologist or a functional medicine practitioner. And I have both. Um, so what do you suggest? And, and, and where do you suggest that they go to find these people? That's a great question. Because I suggest the exact same thing, which is when it comes to supplements, you need to be seen by a, a qualified health professional. Yeah. Now, that might not be your oncologist. They know all about chemo. They right. know, you know, how to put it in, at what dose, what steroids to give you, you know. That is their expertise. But their expertise is probably not going to be nutritional supplements because they didn't study that in school, yeah. nor do they have time to study it now. And so um, 
now there are exceptions. There are integrative oncologists who um, who really do know about supplements. Um, but whether you're seeing a nutritionist or an integrative oncologist or a functional medicine doctor, or even you know perhaps your traditional Chinese medicine herbalist, wherever you're getting your supplements, you need to get them from a qualified health professional. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the sources that I always recommend is this, the Society for Integrative Oncology, so SIO. Um, I presented my research there. It's a wonderful organization, and you can go to their website and literally find an integrative oncologist near you. Um, a certified nutritionist who's got experience working with cancer patients, that's another great resource for you. Definitely. And I go to functionalmedicine.org, and when people are looking for a nutritionist that have worked with cancer patients, it's very important to remember what Dr. Kelly is saying because a lot of those nutritionists are going to suggest you know, drinking Ensure, and, and unless they're really familiar with your work or this way of, you know, living, um, then sometimes they can not be as useful as I've come to find out. It's very, very true. Yeah. My, um, my mother-in-law is um, going through a cancer challenge at the moment, and she was at a very top-notch cancer hospital here in New York City, and after a certain medical procedure, they she had to go on a very modified diet. Mm. And they brought her this book. And it said, okay, so you can drink um, Ensure and you can have canned vegetables, but you can't have fresh fruits and vegetables. And um, it just nothing that they were offering to her was actually alive. All yeah. of it was processed. And I was I was like, oh, we can, you know, I can ju- I can make you a green juice and we can do that. I can make Ensure. I mean, not to bash and sure, but um, we can make things that aren't loaded with sugar for yeah, you, yeah. Um, that are loaded with, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables instead. And so, yes, exactly. You need to find a nutritionist who is on board with a plant strong diet. I think finding this team that you're talking about is really essential because if you can't speak to your doctor, perhaps they can speak to your doctor or you can go in there more armed and hopefully thaw them out so that they're open to meeting you and the other half of your team halfway. I think that's one of the biggest obstacles that I hear patients um, face and it can be really disheartening. So um, another reason to find these wonderful people to support you on your journey. Let's talk about one more of uh, these wonderful categories. I'm going to let you choose the last one. Oh, okay. Well, we talked about diet and supplements. The other seven, believe it or not, are all emotional, yeah. mental, spiritual shifts. Um, so maybe we'll talk about spirituality because I know that you have a spiritual practice of meditation. I've seen pictures on Instagram. Um, so maybe we could talk about that because a lot of people, when they hear spontaneous remission or they hear radical remission, they think, oh, that's someone who, you know, prayed and then overnight they were healed. Mm. Um there are documented cases of that happening, to be sure, but most, the vast majority of the people that I study healed over the course of months, if not years. So that's why I don't use the word spontaneous, because mm-hmm. spontaneous means it happened quick and without a cause. And the people that I study um, worked for months and years to get well, and the cause was all of the hard work they were putting in. Right, right so, on. Yeah, and one of those, one of the key factors that they that they practice um, is deepening their spiritual connection. And I always like to use that word connection because a lot of people instantly think it's about the power of belief, about how hard are you believing. Um, and you know, I, I'm not an expert on those studies of, you know, if you believe hard enough, will it happen? I'm not an expert on that. What I can say is the radical remission survivors that I study, for them, it wasn't about what they believed. It was about whether or not they were practicing connecting to a deeper energy. Mm. So they had a spiritual practice more than they had a specific belief or a strength of a belief. So for them, it was about the daily meditation Mm. or the daily prayer or the daily walk in nature. They were doing something, for the most part, daily to calm their mind, quiet the mind, and go into a place where they felt connected to a deeper energy. Now, from a scientific standpoint, what we know is that when you hook up meditators to fMRI machines and you put them in there and ask them to start meditating, their entire brain changes. 
And that means their entire body changes Mm. and it changes for the better. It changes in really immune boosting ways. So uh, this one study that I I mentioned in my book, because I just love it, is that they took people who had never meditated, taught them how to meditate, and they looked at their genes, their genetics before and after six weeks. Okay. So only six weeks. And what they found is that in six weeks of daily brief meditation, these people who had never meditated before were able to turn off their cancer genes. Wow. Wow. So, wow. Exactly. It's just, it's amazing. Whoa. It's amazing. Because when you go into that meditative state or that prayerful state or that walking in nature state, you're breathing deeply. Your heart rate is nice and slow. You're emotionally telling your brain receptors, I am safe. I am connected. I am at peace. Mm -hmm. And when you feel that way, these wonderful glands in your brain start spewing out drugs, immune boosting drugs. And those drugs are serotonin, relaxin, oxytocin, dopamine, and endorphins. And those five have been shown to increase your white blood cells and your natural killer cells, which is how your body removes cancer. And so some, now we've taken this idea of spiritual healing and we've actually broken it down scientifically mm. to say, if you change your body and your mind in this way every day for a short period of time, you will be giving your bloodstream immune boosting chemicals. And that's why it works. Wow. Yeah. That so, is so inspiring. And, and like I said at the top of this amazing call with you, this is for everybody Sometimes it takes something like a big diagnosis to truly wake us up to how we can possibly take care of ourselves, but we don't have to wait for that wake up call because when I was reading your book, what I came away with was this is really about having a happy, healthy life that's truly fulfilling, a life where you're not driven by your anxiety, your fears, your aches, your pains, your lack of energy. It's about just feeling good while we are here, while we have this great opportunity to be here. So I want to make sure that people who don't have cancer also get this and that people who do have cancer get access to your awesome information. And so here's her book right here. (laughs) So, so, so beautiful. And I'm going to tell me about your website when people want to go and see you and be with you and learn about everything that you've got. Well, uh, if they want to see and be with me, I'm, of course, on social media, um, Dr. Kelly Turner for Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Um, But the thing I'm really excited about is the website, RadicalRemission.com. I have my own website, too, DrKellyTurner.com, and that's more about my bio and, um, you know, that's more about me. But RadicalRemission.com is about this conversation. It's about this research. Because like I said at the beginning of of this call, these cases aren't being studied. I can't tell you how many people I interviewed and they said, Dr. Turner, you're the first person Mm -hmm. to ask me what I did to get well. So you can go to radicalremission.com and you can do two things there. If you've had a radical remission, you can share your story, which is really important for us researchers, but it's also important for the second thing that you can do at the site, which is you can find and read these cases of radical remission um, so that we can learn from you right away as researchers, but also turn your story around right away and allow cancer patients who are dealing with a diagnosis and a challenge to read your story and be inspired by it. And that's what I'm really excited about. You are a pioneer woman. I'm (laughs) I'm super proud of you because here's the thing. Most people who don't have cancer don't do this. It's I'm when I looked at your book, I was like, well, she must be a cancer survivor. Those are the only people who get their shit together. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, she's not a cancer survivor. This is amazing. So thank you for the work that you do. And for anybody out there who's watched this video, go to chriscar.com, leave a comment or drop a comment below. What came up for you? What are your takeaways? And everybody have a great day. Again, thank you, Dr. Kelly, for being here. And we're all going to take much better care of ourselves now that we've had this opportunity to hear your brilliant words. Thank you. I'm so excited. Thanks.